Welcome to our council meeting for our delegates that are here. Um, for the first item in the adoption of the agenda, uh, we'd like to get resolved that the agenda for the April 12, 2022 meeting be accepted as presented. Can I do a mover? Mr. Humphreys, seconder, Mr. All in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Confirmation of the minutes. Be it resolved that the minutes of the March 15th, 2022 regular meeting of council be hereby increased as circulated. Can I do that? <coughs> Seconder is Mr. Hatch. All in favor? And we're also going to do the confirmation of the minutes. So be it resolved that the minutes of the April 7th special meeting of council be hereby approved and circulated. We have a mover, Mr. Hargrace, and a seconder, Councilor Corey. All in favor? Carried. And finance. Be it resolved that the April 7th, 2022 general accounts payable be check numbers 5622 to 5668. In the amount of $218,830.57 be hereby approved. Can I get a mover? Mr. Hargraves and a seconder. Mr. Hatch. All in favor? Carried. Be it resolved that direct deposit number 208 be a staff payroll for the period March 7th to March 18th in the amount of $13,043.26 be hereby approved. Can I get a mover? Second, so we got Councilor Corey and then we got Councilor McDonald. I should be asking, is there uh, any questions? All in favor? Carried. We get resolved that direct deposit number 210 being staff payroll for the period March 21st to April 1st in the amount of $12,768.25 be hereby approved. Can I get a mover? Mr. McDonald, seconder. Mr. Hargraves, <laughs> any discussion? All in favor? Carried. And be it resolved that the direct deposit is 211 being council indemnities for the months of March 2022 in the amount of $6,018.71 be hereby approved. Can I get a mover? That's Mr. Corey. And a seconder, we've got Councillor Hatch. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. And we've got the utility account. Be it resolved that the April 7, 2022 utility accounts payable being a check number 845 to check number 851 in the amount of $6,429.76 be hereby approved. We get a mover. Councilor McDonald, second there. Councilor Hargrave. Any questions? All in favor? We've got the statement of revenues and expenditures. Be it resolved that the statement of revenues and expenditures report to March 31st, 2022, be received as presented. Can we get a mover? Councilor McDonald, seconder. Councilor Corey. Any discussion? Questions? All in favor? And we've got the bank reconciliations. Be it resolved that the bank reconciliations for the month of March 2022 be approved as previously circulated. Can we get a mover? Councilor Hatch, a seconder. Councilor Hargraves, any questions? All in favor? Do you want to? Okay, public hearings are scheduled for 9.15, so we should maybe move ahead to um, correspondence, okay? Just to give anybody a chance to arrive at 9.15. Okay. 
joining a season ticket to So under the order of communications, we have new information from the Association of Manitoba Land Surveyors. It is their 2022 register, and that list is kept on file. The Association of Manitoba Municipalities provided us several pieces of information. One is dated March the 11th. There are two that are March the 14th, March the 24th, March the 25th, March the 29th, March 30th, and two from April the 1st. Caltech uh, has given us information on a survey monument restoration that we'll be doing in the municipality. The Canadian Public Works Association is reminding us that National Public Works Week is May the 15th to the 21st. So we'll maybe do a proclamation to have on our May agenda for that. The Central Assiniboine Watershed District is letting us know that there is water well testing days that are coming up and there is a bit of a price increase. So that information is included in your correspondence. Clean Farms uh, are providing us information again with respect to changes to container recycling program and Public Works has let our waste transfer station know that this is coming about and we'll be providing information to people who attend. The next one is one that Council hasn't spoke about at all. Karen and Warren Ellis um, are wanting to know if the municipality is doing anything in particular. Uh, for assistance to Ukrainian refugees, and if anybody is doing anything they would like to help. What I am aware of is uh, the Association of Manitoba Municipalities has got a couple of efforts underway, and if Council wants to do anything above and beyond that, we would need direction to do so. Uh, that could include something as simple as using some of your grant funds that are left from your budget allocation. And we get to do that. Federation of Canadian Municipalities sent a communique dated March the 14th, March the 21st, March the 28th, April the 4th, and two communiques dated, dated April the 6th. And municipal Relations have sent out a bullet with respect to the Municipal Enforcement Support Program, and that is concluding, and uh, our staff is aware of that. Municipal Relations also sent out a bulletin on the update on support for the Ukraine. And the Municipality of Service Glenwood has sent out information with respect to uh, providing funding to try and resolve physician shortages. And Kane and Council <coughs> wanted to do anything in that regard that would require a resolution. And I would just note that there wasn't an amount included in any of our budgets for this year. And that is the end of communications. Okay. So, be it resolved that the above noted communications be received. Can I get a mover? Mr. Hargraves and the seconder. We got Councillor Hatch. Any discussion? Uh, I have one discussion. On Clean Farms Darcy, on the changes to the container recycling program, where do we fall under? Are we considered small or medium or large? Like, on that communicated that, like, some will be shut down this year, some medium ones will be next year. And the big ones will be shut down in 24. Yeah, so will be next year. So we'll be what I understand. Yep. And I'd also like to add the Association of Manitoba Municipalities regarding the two initiatives that our CEO uh, gave information on that the two initiatives are funding for um, refugees coming to Canada, Manitoba specifically, and Another one was for financial support or aid going to Ukraine to the people that are there that for humanitarian aid. So there's two different initiatives there. So we've got some good projects on the go of there as well. Uh, do we know where there are any refugees coming to our area? Is anyone here? I don't specifically for our area. I haven't heard either. I know that there is. Um, a family or two in the service area who have offered up that they've got space available in their homes. My understanding is they had kind of an overwhelming response. And so I don't know whether everybody who has put the name forward um, may in fact have anybody stay with them or not. 
Any other questions, discussions, or concerns? All in favor? There you go. I think there is still time to do committee reports before we start the public hearing. Okay. So we'll start off there with the committee reports. Councilor Corey, anything to add? Nothing to add. Okay, and then for myself, I've got nothing to add. The North Ward, Ward 2, Councilor Hargraves, anything to add? Just that I attended the budget hearing on Thursday. Councilor Hess, anything to add? Okay. And what was the Ward 1? Over the fact that we are getting all sorts of urgent messages about the pending storm, and we have started sending out pushes to residents. Uh, basically, make sure you've got medications, make sure you've got water, food, uh, probably make sure that your vehicles are fueled up, stay off the roads because if the storm is as bad as predicted, even our equipment will not be out until visibility improves. And I know the CAA is making announcements that if anybody is traveling on roads that are closed, CAA will not be sending assistance. So please stay home if the storm is as bad as predicted. And um, on that note, in all likelihood, our office will be closed probably Wednesday, Thursday, and then that leads us into the Easter long weekend. Thank you. Our finance officer, anything to report? Uh, just yeah, okay. Public works, anything to add? Nothing. Joni pretty much covered it off. Okay. Yeah. And while it is the public works, we've got their report on file. And we've also got a fire chief's report on file. Joni, do you know if there's anything to add to either one of those? Um, fire chief, I did check with him yesterday to see if there's anything specific to the storm. Uh, he said that they will respond if it's possible. But again, that's going to be depend an awful lot on what the storm does. Okay, thank you. That can, only, right? can I just add some of that? Too? They do have the generator for the command center at the fire hall. Like if some kind of power goes for you know, excessive amount of time, like I know that's what it works. In the store. They do have that option. We do our emergency coordinator travel by Brandon. So oh. again, if the highways aren't open, she won't be able to get here. But it is nice to know that we do have that center. Thank you. Our vet board report, anything to add? Uh, yes, the vet board approved the purchase of the x ray that I mentioned in my report. <laughs> okay, so be it resolved that the verbal and written reports be received. Can I get a mover? Councilor Corey, and seconded. Can we get Councilor Hargraves? Any discussion? All in favor? If you would like to go back to public hearing. <coughs> we need to have the first resolution that will resolve us into um, public hearing. <coughs> okay. okay, so we have involved. That the regular meeting of council be recessed to allow council to hold public hearings to receive presentations from any person who wish to make them in respect to two variation applications and a development plan amendment. Can I get a mover? Councilor Hargraves, can I get a seconder? Councilor McDonald, all in favor? Okay, so the first two public hearings are um, for Mr. Weeb's uh, subdivision that was approved. So the variations were a requirement of that. I will let you know that there has been no phone calls and no written representation received. I would ask if there is anybody in the audience who is interested in making representation for the minor variation which would be to reduce the parcel size from 80 acres to 70.93 acres. 
I would invite you to come forward to the delegation table at this time. And there appears to be no one. Okay, so whereas all representatives in regard to the minor variation application B3 slash 22 to reduce the parcel size for the residual parcel from 80 acres to 70.93 acres for property located in the northwest quarter of 26 8 19 WPM need have been dealt with. Therefore, be the result. Pardon me. I'll call the question. All in favor? I should get a motion around. Yes, I'm ahead of myself here. Yeah. Sorry about that. Get a mover, please. Okay. Get a mover on that motion. Okay, we'll get Council McDonald, the second there. Councilor Corey, and we've already done the in favor, so we'll call that carried. All right, the second public hearing is also a variation for Mr. Weed, and this is to reduce the parcel site width from 1,000 feet to approximately 809 feet. Again, I would note there has been no telephone communications or no written communications. So again, if there's anybody interested in coming forward, I would invite you to do so at this time. And there is no one. Okay, so whereas all representatives in regard to variation application B4 slash 22 to reduce the parcel site width for the residual parcel from 1,000 feet to approximately 809 feet for property located in the northwest quarter of 26819 WPM, we have been dealt with. You can I get a four? Yeah. Therefore, be it resolved that the public hearing be concluded. And then we'll call the okay, to the mover. We got Councilor Hargrave, we got Secretary, Councilor Corey. All in favor? There. Okay, the next public hearing is for a proposed development plan amendment. Um, I will make note of the fact that we have received the written report from Community and Regional Planning, and uh, Charla is here and she will be able to address Council. We have received written representation in support of the application from uh, the Gilberts, and I believe they are in attendance and will address council. <laughs> we have received written opposition from uh, Mr. Quickwork at 2 and 10 Metal Recycling, and I don't know whether you would want to address council further, but it is there. And at this time, I would call the applicants to come forward to the delegation table if you would. Um, and we can make the presentation and be prepared to answer any questions the council may have. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for, for acknowledging our request. So, Gilbert and I, we are owners of parcels uh, question. Uh, the request is to rezone part of northwest quarter of 2819 WPM for future subdivision. So this parcel was originally owned by a doctor in Brandon who rented the property from Mr. Murray Kozak, who operates in rain and cattle care. Mr. Kozak was offered first right to purchase this property when the doctor decided to sell. After three months, Murray decided not to go forward with the purchase. Therefore, we have the opportunity to purchase this property through Home Life Real Estate. This agricultural zone property has very little value as agricultural, as it is mostly bushland and have many low spots, which is littered with stones and it's an oddly shaped lot for agricultural use. Mr. Kozak at the time must have seen the low agricultural value in this property or he would have purchased. Matter of fact, Mr. Kozak rents a small piece of hay land from us on the north end of this property. Murray complained about how rough the field was for many years and hesitated to establish the field because he's aware of how heavily infested the field is with stones on this land. When Gilbert established a yard uh, on the property, Murray did some work for him and even snickered if he'd be able to cut the grass in the yard there because of all the problems. 
Through many years of communication with Mr. Kozak as neighbors, many times even helping each other out, Murray always maintained that he would not be opposed of my plan of subdividing the property as long as he had the first chance to purchase the most ugly lot as a buffer zone for himself. He has even expressed a few times that one of his sons would like to establish a yard on this buffer zone. In communication with Mr. Kozak this week, he made comments of possible water issues, part of which could be dealt with in the development plan, such as holding tanks and cisterns. He also mentioned a buffer zone, again, between his property and other lots, which he states that he would not be willing to pay resident residential tax on, yet he wants his son to build a yard there. Mr. Kozak makes mention that people called city slickers, as he calls them, may complain of his livestock husbandry practices, grasping at straws to get his way. Mr. Kozak seems a bitter man due to the fact that he declined the opportunity of owning and controlling the use of his land years ago. Gilbert even offered to donate him a most solidly hundred feet. He would rather purchase a solidly lot if it should come to that. He now presents to be a person that is very difficult to please. Mr. Kozak, though, saw it 50 years ago to subdivide a piece of his property and sell it where a scrapyard business now exists today. Mr. Flickworth would not have the property his business is sitting on if it had not been for a subdivision. This person operates an environmentally sensitive business at the edge of a wetland, possibly affecting the environment and many species of wildlife and fish. A business operated without visual barrier to the highway side either. When Gilbert attended Mr. Flickert's uh, business quite a few times in the past, he would often be approached and state that if, if Gilbert was to donate him 15 acres on the north end of the property where he could relocate his scrap business, he would not show any objection to any subdivision on our behalf. We thought it was odd that he wants him to operate a commercial business where a subdivision would need to take place and yet seems to show concern of rezoning to residential. If I'm not mistaken, he would need to rezone the property to commercial. He was quite bitter that he wasn't aware that our property was up for sale when I purchased it. Mr. Flicker points out how much he cherished his country living. Many other people who have communicated with us also share the same feeling. Mr. Flickert makes reference to a property being ideal grazing land. My experience as a previous agricultural producer, which is Gilbert, um, does not constitute bushland as being ideal grazing land. If it was decent agricultural land, it would have been purchased by a farmer years ago. Mr. Flickert makes reference to dust, noise, and fumes, all of which could be dealt with in a development plan. Most of this parcel is existing bushland. It's an ideal sound barrier. Any potential buyer can clearly see that he, he could clearly see and be made aware of these. We see people complaining of fumes in cities and towns where they reside next to major corridors. Many municipalities have residents pay for their own dust control. Our purpose here is not to point fingers at anyone. And Excuse us if it does feel that way. But when fingers are pointing at us, we'll just take tax as we know them. We have been in contact with the Manitoba Department of Highways back in 2013, as per the municipal instructions. And the highways instructed Gilbert at the time to proceed with the subdivision application at that time. In conclusion, we have been approached by many interested parties in the past who would like to establish a small acreage close to Highway 10, all of which are people who have grown up on farms and would much prefer a little bit more elbow room instead of a city postage stamp lot or hobby farm, gardening or bigger residential lot. This is as close to agricultural use as a residence can be. We aren't impossible people to work with, Rules can be part of any property specific development plan. A buffer zone can be left in place in its natural state. And what a perfect place for that. A perfect setting because it is all bushland. By rezoning this property and repurposing it to the municipality, repurposing it to the municipality would benefit. So 
substantially by increased tax revenue. And overall, it would make better use of this property by offering small acreages to interested buyers. To be clear to the opposition, our intent is to rezone this property from agricultural use, agricultural use to residential and not commercial use. What happens in the future would be between the municipality and the potential owner. Therefore, we're making a very simple request to the RM of Oakland, Wawanisa, to rezone this parcel of land from agricultural to residential. So we'd like to thank you in advance for your consideration. Thank you very much. Does council have any questions for the applicants at this time? <laughs> If you were to go through uh, your residential development, what size would your lots would be? Well, we had thought on the north end of possibly having two acre lots for people that want a smaller parcel. Uh, some people would prefer a two acre parcel instead of a ten acre parcel. Originally, we had thought uh, of all ten acre par uh, parcels, and uh, that's the meaning of the process. Uh, there's uh, a few that would rather have a, a smaller two acre lot rather than any. And that's why we uh, thought of going that direction, but we're not involved, we're, we're not like absolute on that. But we're willing to work with them now, including council. <clears throat> so, question being, how many lots on well, average? The plan right now was to have uh, five two acre lots on the north end. And, uh, by uh, approximately eight and a half acres to nine acres. Uh, access to it. Are they onto the private road or are they onto the tree bank road? Or uh, there would be no uh, there would be free access to the tree bank. Uh, by law, there is access to it. It's shared and it's private. In communication with the highway department, as I had been instructed in 2013 by the municipality to communicate with them, they told us no, we're, we're not we're not saying no. I proceed with your with your subdivision first. We can't say we're we're not going to grant you access when there's not even a subdivision. The first thing to do is do the subdivision. Then come to us because we don't have anything against that. Okay, and you received that over. That was their communication with us at the time. <clears throat> so this is you applied for this before for this yes, subdivision in 2015, and it was obviously denied. Right. What were the reasons? Do you know, or? I don't. Off the top of my head, I could probably pull the file. Um, it was council's decision not to proceed, so I don't think it got to the ministerial stage. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. At this time, I would ask if there was anyone else who would like to come forward and make representation to council. If you would like to come to the delegation table. I would like to get your name and the property that you are representing. Uh, good morning. My name is Daniel Burns. I own and reside immediately uh, east of the subject site, so I own the easterly 80 acres that uh, bots the uh, proposed subdivision or redesignation. Actually, is what we're here to discuss initially today. Um, so, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, meet with council this morning. I just for so you have a visual rep for presentation. I passed out a little sketch that I just threw together. So the west half of the northwest two two eight nineteen. That's the property that's being proposed uh, for redesignation. Uh, I own the east half. I have lot two kind of indicated in the red. 
Uh, that's primarily pasture land that I own and uh, rent or Murray has cattle along in that area and my residence is in the lot one. It's, it is one, all in one lot. It's not something I look at for discussion purposes. Uh, again, my name is Daniel Burns and I do own the easterly half of the border section adjacent to the subject site. Um, I'm here today to register an opposition to the redesignation from ag to residential. Uh, while I'm a supporter of development in general, I believe the RMO for the law needs uh, to look for opportunities to increase their tax base. Um, in my opinion, this is, is not the appropriate location. Uh, I do a lot of this work professionally, actually. I'm an engineer and I do subdivision work. It's one of my main areas of practice, so I'm fairly well versed in the uh, requirements <coughs> from a land use planning perspective. So, and uh, I don't like to be considered an indie or not in my backyard because I, I do this work all the time and I'm on both sides of the table pro for and, and in, op in opposition to development. Uh, I spent a lot of time considering do I oppose this when I received the list in the, in the mail? You know, I I look at it from a strictly neocentric perspective, and yeah, there is benefits for density. I think uh, we all recognize that increased tax base is essential for the municipality. Uh, is this the right area? We spent some time thinking about that. We spent time thinking about the uh, appropriate provisions of the Planning Act, the Municipal Act, and the RM Development Plan, and how this would fit within that. And uh, ultimately, I guess I decided that I didn't feel, personally, I didn't feel that this was the, the right location. So I want to maybe discuss some of my, my rationale for that um, from, in, more from a professional perspective. Uh, so why do I pose the redesignation? Uh, in accordance with the Manitoba Planning Act, uh, the RMs uh, and the RMs Development Plan, Council must satisfy that uh, must be satisfied that any redesignation, redesignation meets the test. And what is the test? The test is set out in the Planning Act states that Council must consider the following when considering uh, change, excuse me, change in designation. Now, will the proposed designation be compatible with the general nature of the surrounding area? One of the tests that you have to be satisfied with. Will it not be detrimental to the health and general welfare of people living or working in the surrounding area? or negatively affect other properties or potential development in the surrounding area? That's question two. Question three, is it generally consistent with the applicable provisions of the planning or the development plan, bylaw, and zoning bylaw? So those are three questions that council has to be satisfied with in order to uh, approve such a redesignation. Question uh, the council must consider, uh, it will be is will it be compatible with the general nature of the surrounding area? I submit to you it is not. The surrounding area consists of large holdings suitable for agriculture. The purpose or the proposed redesignation will take a large holding and subdivide it into small lots. I weren't sure what lots, but we'll hear from the applicant this morning for maybe uh, four, ten acre lots and, and five, two acre lots. So that's, that's what they're looking for. <coughs> That's definitely not consistent with the surrounding nature of the agricultural area of large holdings. <coughs> uh, these lots would be sold uh, for residential <coughs> purposes. Uh, this is not compatible with the surrounding agricultural properties that are there. Allowing that dense residential development to be established adjacent to farmland is not consistent with the Planning Act. The reason that the Planning Act protects farmland is to reduce potential conflicts. Uh, that will occur with residential lots adjacent to farmland. The neighboring property is well established family farm that has been raising cattle for decades. And the potential to create conflicts between the farming industry and the residential uh, is large in this particular situation. Can council reasonably say that it is compatible? In my opinion, they can. The second part to the test relates to will it not be detrimental to the health? general welfare of people living and working in the area or negatively affect properties or potential development in the surrounding area. Uh, this one's a little more difficult to assess. Will it negatively impact me? Likely not. Um, but it limits my ability to be able to do what I want with my life. Currently I rent 
approximately 60 acres that's in red uh, to my neighbor, Mr. Kozak. Um, so we, we use this, this land as for grazing as cattle in the summer. Uh, it's an ideal situation for, for both of us. You know, he's able to keep cattle on my land and it keeps some of my underbrush cleaned out. And so it's worked well. We've had a good relationship. I've lived there for nine years and it's, it's always been that way. I haven't felt it. I haven't come across very being too difficult in my experience in dealing with them over the past nine years. Um, so we'll, you know, so currently I rent the 60 acres to my neighbor and graze this cattle. Will residential development limit this, make it less desirable for cattle when there is an increase in human activity? Possibly. I've witnessed with, with the one residence that currently lives in the in the bush. Um, you know, they've got kids in that street. The kids are out playing, but they also have dirt bikes that are out ripping around in the back and making noise and spooking cattle. So that's one house. If we're going to put 10 more houses in that area, that's 10 more potential conflicts that have to be considered. And council is going to be getting phone calls when they're complaining about cattle and, and vice versa. So it's, it's something that needs to be considered with allowing it in that close proximity. I see in my security cameras, neighbor's dogs screwing around my yard all the time, and that's one one house again. You know, there's potential for ten more. Um, my kids are out in the back shooting squirrels and trapping and doing what they do in the bush. That's why I moved there so they could live that lifestyle. Safety concerns. You know, if they're out shooting and having fun doing what kids are supposed to do in my opinion when you live in the country and on a farm. Uh, more people's higher chance for some solutions to occur. So that's something that I'm concerned with. So do I feel it negatively impacts my life or my ability to do what I want, basically. Uh, the third part of the test, is it generally consistent with the typical provisions of the development plan? No, it's not. This area is 100% designated agricultural and is such for a good reason. So we live in a farming community where others respect that the livelihood is based on a rural agricultural market. Am I a farmer? No. I raise chickens for a hobby. That's what I do in the summer to give my kids something to do. Uh, but do I farm? No. But do I understand farming? Yes. I was raised on a farm with, with dairy, hogs, chickens. So I understand the farming life and the challenges and the that go with it and the need to be applying manure and the, of spraying your fields and am I going to complain about it? No, I do the same thing. I spray my pasture to try to deal with the herbs that we have all the time and I'll look after that. Um, putting a whole bunch of residents in that area that may not be familiar with our lifestyle living in the country, it always causes potential. There's, there's no doubt in my mind about that. Um, so I, you know, I submit that we aren't, this area is not, um, generally consistent with the provisions. To my review of the Planning Act and considering the three test questions that Council must consider, it's my opinion that the proposed development fails all three. And for this reason, the Council will be obligated to deny second reading of the proposed plan. I sat down last night and actually just put some of these notes together um, and I thought just jotted down a few points of you know, what's, what would this mean to me and what does it look like? Um, a few of the points that I think I'll just touch on briefly. Uh, one of the facts that you need to consider is the distance to the existing cattle operation and feedlot. I believe your zoning and development plan requires an 800 meter separation buffer. Uh, approving this would reduce that separation from down to zero, which would require a variance. And that, uh, there's a reason why there's an 800 meter buffer in development plans is to try to prevent the conflicts and that will occur when you put a bunch of people living next to cattle operations. So road safety is always concerned, more people, more traffic, more potential for accidents, but that's going to happen anytime in any development. So it's, it is something to think about. Um, our roads in that area, I get to travel. I'm fortunate I only have to drive a half a mile up Trees Bank Road every day. It is horrible. Things <laughs> <laughs> are having a hell of a time keeping it together. I can't wait to see what the snow does for that hill after last fall, but that's a whole different story you can talk to me about later. Um, it's, it's tough, and putting more traffic on it is potentially going to be a problem. So, you know, that's going to increase your, your maintenance. 
um, talked a little bit about safety in the bush and, and being able to, for me to be able to use the land and hunt and deer hunt or shoot squirrels and kids and trap and do what we do. I have different things with that. Trespassing, I don't want to be a neighbor that's out putting up no trespassing signs. I believe in, you know, neighborly love and working and helping each other out. Larry and I have always had that. He goes over wherever he, whenever he needs to, and I go over his yards whenever I need to, and that's the way it should be. You know, if you put 10 more people living there, 10 more residents, there's inevitably going to be people crawling around in the bush because that's what kids do. You know, it's a recreation area. I would have done the same way. Grazing of cattle. Murray's cattle occasionally get out, especially calves that can get through fences. You know, whether what is a city person that's got a cow walking around in their backyard gonna do? You know, is that is that appropriate? Something to think about. Um, and farm equipment safety on the road. So uh, I had the opportunity to review the community planning report also that the council received yesterday, and I'm assuming everybody has reviewed that. And I think it's very uh, explicitly states that you know they Manitoba Ag would be opposed to any redesignation in this area. Um, so they would recommend that you also deny the second reading because of the conflicts and the setback distance considerations. And Manitoba infrastructure, the applicant indicated today that they told them to apply, but the report to council indicates that uh, they would not support any new accesses off of the frontage road. So any accesses, any development would have to be serviced by a new internal road. So that's not even in the applicant's plans. So that Manitoba infrastructure, but that was a big hammer because I go against them all the time and they don't convince them otherwise and they've made up their mind, have indicated in their planning report that they would not support, or they, they wouldn't oppose the development, but they would not approve any new accesses off the front of the road. That's the way developing that and having multiple shared access drive was uh, a challenge. So how the applicant would deal with that, I, I can't say, but it's something that we need to consider in making your decision. So in conclusion, uh, the redesignation of the lands does not meet the test that's set out in the Planning Act that council has to be satisfied for, and therefore council has a responsibility to its ratepayers to deny second reading of this plan. Yeah, any questions again? Does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> I'd be able to finish off with your presentation. I can send you one that doesn't have my scribbles on it. Mm. Just this is kind of the periphery of the of uh, of the issue, but you built in this a lot. What would you say is a more is a better place for subdivision like this? Because I've struggled with this myself. <laughs> Well, from a land use planning perspective, fragmenting farmland is always a, a frowned upon, and especially development adjacent to primary livestock. So intensive livestock is, you know, in this particular case, makes it uh, less desirable. Uh, if you were to say where, and in our area, well, if you look another mile east on the Trees Bank Council has over the years fragmented a number of lots. They redesignated in 2017 in your development plan an area, I think a quarter section to a rural residential already. So in doing so, you've signaled, or council at the time signaled that that's the intent was to focus the density of more residential into that area. Um, so that that would be, my opinion would be that makes more sense to continue. You've already sort of set a residential cluster well, then you want to continue to build on that cluster and see it grow, but focus. But if you start doing that everywhere and everybody that wants a piece, it fragments all the land and, and it does impact uh, farming activity. So that's probably, honestly, my main reason for when I looked at this and, and said, you know, is this a good idea or isn't this? And I'm, I'm pro development, I do development all the time. That's the main reason. When I look at it, I think uh, concerns with the impacts it would have with uh, various cattle operation, and you've already established an area and you're designated in your development plan to say this is where we want to see the residential growth. Stick, you know, stick to it. That's that was the decision that we made. That's why we do the development plan. We review that every five years to identify those areas, and then that gives you a master plan to work off of, and that's your focus to say this is where we want to see growth to occur. We don't want to be 
occurring in the rural and Thank you. Would a larger lot size by the applicants to change your view at all? No, I don't think so. A um, couple of reasons access, access for it, and still, even if you had well, what would you consider a larger lot size? Like from a land use planning, the, the province and planners will tell you 10 acres is a waste of land for residential because what does somebody do that lives on an acres with 10 acres of land? Typically, that's too large of a lot. So, the preference from a planning perspective typically is five or two acre lots if you're going to. Take a large holding and, and fragment it, well, then you want to increase your density. So, honestly, 10 acre lots there, I think, is a mistake as well. You know, if, if you were to do something with smaller lots, it's probably better than, than larger lots. But smaller lots creates conflicts. It does. And that's why this is a larger, larger lots won't. That, that's why this is a core area. But larger lots waste land. So, in the long term, that's generally considered a, a waste of land from a planning perspective. Last responding. I'll look for somebody that would like to raise a couple of steers for their own yeah. consumption. Yeah, there's there's definitely times that it would make sense. Yeah, it would make sense. But if you're talking strictly residential. So if it was put in the two 40 acre pieces and one more one more house in a 40 acre. I don't know, actually I uh, you could probably handle that from a variance perspective from what but within the rules of the planning act and maybe the, the, the province could speak better to that two two forties would be um the rest of it just for my clarification you do not live on this property not, pre no, not presently no so i asked the question as well um not necessarily for yourself but regarding rural residential rezoning on a 10 acre lot, can you have one? Can we rezone? Um, yeah, <laughs> Community Regional Planning can address that in their conversation as well. Okay. But we did amend our zoning bylaw to include uh, residential large lots, which would be 10 acres. And the purpose, if you recall, Council, for doing that was to allow for some hobby farms without requiring <coughs> additional use. Thank you very much for your presentation. Is there anyone else who would like to address council at this time?
good with the lights arm was down. <clears throat> They're just getting into it, so I would like to hopefully they would have the opportunity to live the way hit we have over the years. And uh, basically that's I mean I have a other real well point to uh, criticize anyone, but I think that um, Mr. Grant pretty much covered all I was really concerned about. My biggest concern is uh, trying to keep that keep wearing it for as long as possible. <laughs> but you gotta have adequate water in our area, it's very hard to get good water. And maintain a good well. So, so that's really, I guess, my concern is that's why I'm opposing the, the, the reclassification from agriculture to residential. And that's all I have to say. Do you have any questions for Mr. Koldak? I just got the one. Have you had any water issues for livestock in the past? Oh, yeah. We've, uh, we've dug more than one well. And, uh, Hard to find, so when you find it, you try and work after it. Yes. Okay. So that's all I have to say. Okay, we've got Mr. Could I add one Burns comment? Burns in the back has a question. Would be appropriate to add one comment to that that I forgot. Um, well, our groundwater in that area is generally known to, to travel in the southeasterly direction towards the river. So they're, they're definitely. There is potential that that could cause groundwater issues for the livestock operation because there is farming operations in southeast of where the wells would be installed. That could be dealt with from a, from a groundwater investigation to review that and determine whether it was an issue. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Well, I think the Dan did a good job of covering most of my points. There. And, uh, yeah, I've only talked to Gilbert once or twice, and then the last time I think we spoke, he had asked if I would have any objections to him subdividing out the piece in the middle there now, so he could build a house for himself and reside there. Uh, but uh, that's obviously not what he was intending. He was trying to subdivide it further. I, yeah, he said he just wanted one lot to build a house for him to live at, and uh, he still does not live there. And uh, he's applied now to re rezone it and uh, subdivide it. Uh, I never met his wife, but uh, she seems to uh, know a lot about me, but, uh, <laughs> um, and I've never been offered 15 acres of land. I've never had that conversation ever with either one of them, just to put that on the record as well. Uh, other than that, I think Daniel covered it quite well. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to one or two lots there, but the, the density that he's looking to do, I think I would be against really all right of that. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Clifford? Um, are there times, I've been to your business a couple times, but are there times where there's say more noise, more smell than other times? Uh, uh, summertime is definitely our busy season. Uh, yeah, there's lots, we've got lots of big trucks. We've got trucks going back and forth, hauling loads every day. Like right now, we're probably sometimes 12 to 20 loads a day go up and down that uh, road and all big highway trucks. They're not little half tons or nothing like that. So they make a lot of dust and pound out the roads pretty bad. So uh, definitely one of the concerns I just would have if that road is hard enough to keep in one piece. <clears throat> yes, I have one. Paul well, might even be able to ask Mr. Daniel. Um, if there was a subdivision there and there was the dust was a problem, who would pay for the dust control on that on that front of the phone was a problem? Well, the problem is because you hardly any anymore to my knowledge unless it's changed, but it would be up to the local landowners to carry it. And that's what a lot of them have uh, three municipalities they don't they don't care mm -hmm. any dust control. I could apply to the province at one time, but I don't have a lot of things. That's a little bit of information. Any other questions? Um, I think we're okay. 
you got a question? I have a, just a few comments. Um, just a reminder that we're we're here to apply for a rezoning to residential. We're not at the subdivision stage yet, so everything is why we're here for input, um, which doesn't mean that we have our subdivision plans all planned out. As far as wells are concerned, we did mention in our presentation that cisterns and uh, storage, tanks. storage tanks are always an option, and that's the way of life these days, because not everybody can <coughs> dig a well. Many, many municipalities, that's part of the development plan, and that's the only way you can get any water. Uh, as far as Gilbert residing there, uh, Gilbert originally subdivided that piece of land and resided there for I don't know how many years he came there for. Five years. Five years when he decided to move away. So it was always intended as a residential property and subdivided. So it's not like he said they invited to run away. We have two children that live in the area here in Brandon, and our plan is to uh, uh, build a home there one day and uh, retire there. But right now, work is taking us closer to Winnipeg. Yeah. <clears throat> and like we always we said in our statement too, as far as a buffer zone, that we will, we will entertain all all the inputs. This is why we're here. We're here firstly to. We zone it, and then we want to work with, with the municipality, with the, with the local and residents. The, for this. And we've always had a good working relationship with our neighbors, more as friends than, than anything else. Yeah, and the access <clears throat> off the number, the service road is already a shared access right now, and that's something we have to deal with uh, a little bit when you develop that property, but also when we sold the property. We just sold the property yeah. piece uh, this year. I have been, I've been renting the property to the same uh, people since I moved away from the property. The neighbors seem to all get along together, and then they approached me asking me if I would be interested, interested in entertaining the thought of selling it to them. Seeing as I don't have immediate use for the property, I thought suitable to, 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 to the proper people to live in the area. And, and that is a seven acre, seven acre parcel? That's it. Seven, seven, seven acre parcel. <clears throat> Which is a good fit. It was a good fit. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's, That's just okay. Fun. And community and regional planning, would you like to address council on your report? <coughs> council, I have to leave. So I will phone in. Darcy, I'll phone to your phone. But I have to get over. Sure. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Hi, my name is Charlotte Lillawan. I'm the regional manager for the Brandon Community Planning Office. And so I believe everyone has a copy of um, their council uh, the report that I submitted to John Pete yesterday. Um, so just before I go through some things in the report, I just wanted to summarize a few things that I heard um, just today, earlier on. So yes, we're not looking at a subdivision at this point in time. We're, we're looking at the redesignation, potential redesignation of an area that's required in the development plan. And so that's what this discussion is about. And there's a level of hierarchies of what we need to go through. We would need to redesignate the area to support any future development. That's what we're discussing. Then the next part is about rezoning to uh, nestle within the redesignation if it were to go through, and then and subsequently the um, subdivision. So we um, don't have a subdivision plan at this time that I'm aware of um, because we're not a, we're not discussing that we're discussing the redesignation right now, which is a higher level that would be needed to support any um, rezoning subdivision and development of the parcel in question. So um, the report I have here is a few pages long, so I'm not going to read it out, you know, word for word. What I'm going to do is just highlight some things that um, might recap some things that have already been discussed or things that I'd like to point out to. So the report summarizes comments that we would have gotten um, in circulating this proposed proposed redesignation to other 
entities within government, such as infrastructure and North Dakota agriculture, which are the ones that we're going to talk about more. And I'm also going to summarize what um, our branch and MISAC have put together here. So this amendment proposes to redesignate uh, 61.92 acres um, in the court section that we have been discussing from agricultural general area to rural residential area. As I mentioned, this redesignation provides the necessary policy support to allow for the future rezoning, subdivision, and development of the parcel for a new multi lot <coughs> residential development. So one of the, the things that we noted um, after um, putting in the, the development plan policies that pertain to this area is that there is one cattle operation, which has been discussed here already, which is located immediately to the south of lands being proposed for redesignation. The minimum mutual separation yeah. distance between the designated rural residential area and the cattle operation is 800 meters, which I believe the Burns had mentioned before. Based on this information, the mutual setback distances cannot be met for this proposed redesignation. Um, there is also um, a section in which, um, actually, it was Peter, our community plan of the office, has put together about. Um, sorry, I'm just going to have to read this part that he had put together. He had mentioned that there, um, he would like to. We point out um, some previous rural residential areas that had been um, designated through other development plan amendments that have gone through recently. And, um, and he recommends that council consider whether there is an immediate need for the establishment of an additional designated rural residential area if the current designated areas are not entirely developed at this time. So that's something that we put in there for consideration. Um, but I want to go back to the cattle operation part. So Manitoba Agriculture um, puts in further details about um, the FSGP cattle operations within the one mile radius of this area. And they've noted that, again, this proposed redesignation does not meet the minimum mutual separation distances requirements to the neighboring livestock operation. And therefore, it would be inconsistent with the provincial land use policies and the development plan policies uh, for open water and research development plan. So Manitoba Agriculture does object to this proposal and does not recommend proceeding to second reading. Manitoba um, Transportation and Infrastructure has noted that they do not object necessarily to this amendment, but they do have some concerns and comments that they've included and we put into the report. So some of the things have been talked about already. Um, they uh, would like to um, you know, Note that they will not support multiple access connections to the PTH access um, premises road. They have concerns regarding additional traffic safety, traffic and the safety around the frontage road or the municipal road access connection on PTH 10. And that a, tra a traffic impact and drainage studies will be required for future development. So it was noted um, in discussions earlier that yes, there is already an access road. Uh, um, a road onto uh, that PTH access road. And uh, infrastructure has has noted that, but they said they have concerns with additional traffic, traffic and safety. They also um, note that, um, so they would require the traffic impact and drainage studies. And also there would be a permit that would be required under the Transportation Infrastructure Act if any of this kind of would to be moving forward. So in summary, based on the preceding information, um, our office, the Brandon Community Planning Office, notes that there are provincial objections to this proposed bylaw, and that it's not consistent, the bylaw is not consistent with the municipality's development plan, and we recommend Council pass a resolution not to proceed with second reading of this plan amendment um, conclude following the hearing, the public hearing today. Um, however, if you do propose, or if you do choose to move forward with second reading, the steps are one below what we would need next from you. Um, so I wanted to summarize the comments that we heard from agriculture, what we heard from infrastructure, and then what we provided as advice from a planning perspective, um, and then welcome any questions that you have at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Bowman, do you have any questions? <coughs> That 800 uh, meter buffer zone, uh, 
so that that will be uh, joined all the way around the, the joining properties. Is that? Uh, you know, I'm not familiar exactly with what is written in your development plan as, but basically you have it as in your development plan for the entire site. You need that 800, that 200 meter um, buffer zone. So yes, I believe it would be all the way around. Um, to, well, only two sides of the street so Right, but you would still, you would still not be meeting it on those two sides, right? It would still be, it would be less than 800 meters according to this report. It would be zero. When you mean livestock operation, you mean just the yard area, or are we talking the pasture lands? Um, I be, I'm, I believe it would be considered like the entire operation, like the entire parcel of land. I would have to actually clarify that. I would have to look into the report to know into the development plan. I um, I'm not as familiar with your development plan as Peter is. Peter is the, the, the community planner from my office that would have put this report together, but he's on holidays this week, so I'm just filling in for him um, in terms of the report part of it. Any other questions? Sure, is there any difference, <coughs> mm -hmm. excuse me, depending on the number of livestock as to what the buffer area would be? Yeah, um, so in the report, we um, indicate that the, or the 800 meter buffer is between 100 to 200 animal meat. So if we go below that, we would have to look into what the minimum um, separation differences are. And I believe that this separation of animals is between that quota. Okay, if there are no other questions, we we'll maybe just ask you to hang around. Sure, yeah. When we get to the bottom off stage to pull things out. So there's discussions at that point as, as their discussions undergo. Okay. Okay. And all the presenters who have their opportunity to speak, we will now proceed. Whereas all representatives in regards to development plan amendment bylaw number 21-2021 to redesignate properties located in Northwest Quarter 2819 WTM Grand have been dealt with. Therefore, be it resolved, the public hearing be concluded and council is in its normal order of business. Can I get a mover? All in favor? Okay, and then we've already looked at communications and committee reports. Council would be moving into the order of bylaws. <coughs> and um, the bylaw for Mr. Graham has been placed on the agenda with the resolution of second reading. We would need a motion on the floor before council has its discussion. If council decides to defeat that, that is certainly um, your discretion to do so. So, if you would like to put that motion forward. Okay. So, uh, be it resolved that bylaw number 21 2021 to amend development plan bylaw number 04 2018. To redesignate part of Northwest Quarter 2819 WPM from agricultural general area to resident, pardon me, to rural residential area, be read a second time. Can we get a mover? And council, I would request that if you've got concerns <coughs> on this, that we actually defeat the motion versus not have it considered at all. That way it just closes the books. For us. Um, okay, so we got Councilor Corey as a mover. Can we get a seconder? Yeah. Councilor McDonald. Discussion? Discussion. Uh, these things have been something I struggled with, which I already said. Um, I think, I mean, there's the obvious close to the cattle is, I mean, is all is has been brought up. Mm -hmm. I also try and look 30 years into the future on this and 
And I think, well, you know, we've already started one, you know, a couple miles down. If we start another rural residential here, again, in 30 years, if uh, Mr. Burns doesn't own his, maybe the next person would want to do another rural residential and increase. And I think somewhere we have to look at, you know, where do we want the development where, you know, we, we start running out of the, the land, the natural lands that probably attract people there in the first place. You know, a lot of people like living in the country, but maybe if you've got 10 houses across the, the road from you, then it all of a sudden isn't really living in the country anymore. It's just living in another town. And that's one of the problems I have with some of these. I do like that it's close to pavement in that, you know, I find that having a whole bunch of people driving four miles down gravel roads just to get to pavement to get to work. You know, that part I think is, you know, is a positive. And that's actually why I asked, you know, what you thought was, you know, made a good, a good uh, uh, place for something like this. But um, yeah, I do see probably more problems than, than positives in this myself. Yeah, I, I agree. This thing needs a little more talk. And uh, I know the dealing with the Manitoba infrastructure is going to bring up issues and the drainage plan and all this. The costs are going to be huge. Uh, it needs, yeah, this needs more discussion. Councillor Corey, or pardon me, Councillor Hargraves or Eklich, do we have any comments or concerns? Yeah, I guess I have concerns over. Thank you. Well, yeah, I guess with the we have the in our development plan we have the eight hundred meter buffer zone, and I just just think that it's there for a reason to to uh, you know uh, because we, we we all know we get some complaints from people that have moved out to the country, and then all of a sudden the main farm operation all of a sudden tends to smell or the noise or something, and, that, and that's a concern. Right? Any other comments, discussion, questions? If I could just ask Sharma, <coughs> excuse me, if council were to proceed with second reading, mm -hmm. this would then have to go to the minister's office That's for right. approval. Yeah. The minister has the opportunity to approve it, reject it, or amend it. Yes. Is that correct? And also refer it to the municipal board. Or refer it to the municipal board. Um, just in your experience, um, any idea a minister would maybe say perhaps part of this could move ahead, but the 800 meter buffer zone has to be put in place? I think that um, it would not be, um, I'm not going to speak for what the minister would say, but what they're going to do is look at the fact that there are concerns from community planning, concerns from infrastructure, and then an objection from agriculture. So that's three different um, components of government that have um, voiced basically red flags, um, bigger or large, um, in terms of magnitude, and would probably um, look at that component. So you know, why do those exist? So the chance of it um, just going forward as it is is probably quite um, small. But um, and I'm not going to say that it could go forward. With, you know. That's not really, that's above um, my uh, scope of responsibility, but they would definitely be looking at the fact that there's multiple um, components of concerns here as it's proposed right now. Yeah. Okay, so then for council, your choice is to either approve second reading 
at which point it would go through to the minister. Uh, there would be an indication that there were objections and they would receive copies of any presentations that were received today. Uh, Can I just add, I'm sorry. And then also, if it were to go to the minister, the local objections would also be included in that too, right? They're not just looking at the potential ones. I'm right. sorry. And the, and the local ones are obviously very important as well. So there, there's multiple ones. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's good. And, and those would definitely be included. Uh, Council's other opportunity is to defeat the motion for second reading at this point in time, at which point I would ask then that we also have a motion that there be no further reading so that it is in fact closed off in our books. And that is certainly the council's decision to make. I don't know if there's any other questions, comments before the question is called. Okay. Yours. So as the discussion has already been completed, I'll call the question. All in favor? Councillor Hargraves. I'm all in favor. Okay. Mr. Krekowicz? All in favor. Okay, so we have a unanimous not in favor. It's defeated. And then if I could actually have a motion be it resolved that bylaw 21 dash 2021 be given no further readings. Okay. So we get a motion on the floor. We've got a motion. Councillor Hatch, seconder. Councillor Corey. All in favor? In favor. Okay, we got 100 percent Carried. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So that concludes that. Thank you very much for coming out. I will follow up with correspondence to everybody with council's decisions. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thanks for coming out. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I am. Do you need me on here anymore? No, if you want to go at this point, Brett, it's up to you. The rest of the meeting will be pretty quick. Yeah, I'll just, I can hardly hear him, so okay. you guys, I'll just uh, leave you guys. Okay. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Um, if I will uh, just ask you a question about like the latest action. Yeah, because, um, yeah, it's Peter that's much more uh, familiar with redevelopment plan. I just don't have that information. And for another time, we run into the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's our job to do this kind of thing. So it, we definitely want to ask those questions in terms of like the helpful future. Yeah. And um, we had differing numbers on number of cattle, so that did we? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we didn't really have a definite. I see. Oh, I didn't realize. I'm. I'm sorry. I hadn't seen this report until Friday, so, <laughs> so I was just going by what I have here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Yeah. yeah. And feel free to call me Okay. Okay. Thank you. We're just gonna hold on just for a second there, Mr. Cuffledge. We're just not. Uh, never always in trouble. Uh, I had just googled an animal unit is defined as the number of livestock required to excrete 73 kilograms of nitrogen in a 12 month period. So uh, it seems to me that a cow calf is more than one. Yeah, it, and we've got the calculations for it. Um, Can I just look up two numbers? Yes.
It's not as one thing, but the hell the roads are going to be after it melts. It's going to Did you check the radar? See, no, just one more minute, thirty. <laughs> okay, so we will resume our council meeting and proceed with the next bylaw. Bylaw number 27, pardon me, be it resolved that bylaw number 27 2022, being a bylaw for the use of municipal resources in an election, be read a second time. Can I get a mover? Councillor McDonald, can I get a seconder? Councillor Corey, any discussion? All in favor? In favor. In favor, we're unanimous, carried. And we're going, this uh, is the third reading coming, so this will be a recorded vote, is that correct? Okay. So be it resolved that bylaw number 27, 2022, be read a third and a final time. Can I get a mover? Councillor Hatch, can I get a seconder? Councillor McDonald, all in favor? In favor. And we've got 100% there as well. Carried. Right. Move on to bylaw number. 28-2022, so be it resolved that bylaw number 28-2022 to amend property maintenance and unsightly premises, bylaw number 18-2021, be read a second time. Can we get a mover? Councillor Hatch and a seconder, we've got Councillor Corey. Any discussion? All in favor? In favor. Perfect. Okay, so we've got 100% carried. And then we've got be it resolved that bylaw number 28 2022 be read a third and final time. And again, this is a recorded vote. Can we get a mover? Councillor McDonald, can we get a seconder? Councillor Corey, in <coughs> favor? Okay. No opposed, we're carried. We move on to bylaw number 29-2022. Be it resolved that bylaw number 29-2022 being a bylaw to amend indemnity bylaw number 05-2018 with respect to review of indemnities and per diems be read a first time. And as there's no discussion or debate on first reading, I'll call the question. Who would be the mover? Councillor McDonald, Councillor. Hatch is our seconder. All in favor? In favor. Carried. And we have no unfinished business. So we're going to move on to general business. Be it resolved that minor variation application number V3-22 to reduce the parcel size for the residential parcel from 80 acres to 70.93 acres in the ag zone for property located in the northwest quarter of 26819 WPM Suite be approved without conditions. Can I please get a mover? Councillor Corey, seconder. Councillor McDonald, any discussion? All in favor? In favor. Okay, carried. Be it resolved that variation application number V422 to reduce the parcel site, pardon me, parcel site width for the residual parcel from 1,000 feet 
to approximately 809 feet in the egg zone for property located in Northwest Quarter 26819 WPM Weed be approved without permission. Negative mover. Councillor Hatch, can I get a seconder? Councillor Corey, any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Favor. Carried. And we're going to move on to uh, Little Sir Subdistrict. Be it resolved that Mitchell McPherson be appointed to the Central Assiniboine Watershed District dash the Little Sir Subdistrict with a term of office to expire on December 31st, 2022. Can I get a mover? Councillor McDonald, seconder. We've got Councillor Corey. Any questions? Discussion? All in favor? In favor. Carried. Be it resolved that the correspondence from Terry Schreider and Charlotte Cron dated March 16th, 2022 with respect to drainage in Carroll, Manitoba, be received and a gate be installed on the culvert in accordance with direction from the province of Manitoba. Can I get mover? Councillor Hatch, seconder. We've got Councillor Corey. Any discussion? Would that be uh, our public works guys installing that or would that be the structure? No, that would be us. This is all dated back to the original Carroll drainage project from 2012. So, okay. Any other questions or concerns? Okay, so I'll call the question. All in favor? In favor. We've got 100%. Carried. So, we're going to move on to be it resolved that subdivision app. Location number 4157-22-8381 as submitted by Ronald and Ethel Dixon to subdivide part of Northeast Quarter 13819 WPM be approved subject to one, a conditional use order being granted to allow for non-farm single family dwelling with an ag agricultural general zone and two, a minor variation order being granted to increase the non-farm parcels from 10.0 acres to 11.0 acres. Can we get a mover? Councillor Corey, seconder, Councillor McDonald, any discussion? All in favor? Favor. Carried. We're moving on to be it resolved that the Wallonisa Community Foundation Incorporated be added to the municipal liability policy as an additional name insured at no additional cost to the municipality. Can I get a mover? <coughs> Councillor McDonald, can I get a second? Councillor Hatch, any questions? Uh, Joy, if you'd like to elaborate a little bit on that one. Um, certainly, we received a request from the foundation uh, they've indicated in their letter that it is cost prohibitive for them to carry insurance. There are several other municipalities that do include this on their policy. Uh, Wayne has had a chance to check with our insurer and they don't have an issue with it and there would be no cost to the municipality. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll call the question. All in favor? In favor. Uh, unanimous, so we're carried. Okay, so last on the list here is our adjournment. Be it resolved that this meeting is now adjourned. Time to meet again on Tuesday, pardon me, meeting to be adjourned at 1029 to meet again on Tuesday, May 17, 2022 at 9 a.m. at the Municipal Office in Wallonisa. We call a mover. Councillor Corey, seconder, Councillor Hatch. All in favor? In favor. Carried.